All right, I wanted to go ahead and make a short little video here about some of the quality of life mods that I've used in the past and generally how to get into modding as a start. So initially, some of the first things you should know is that there are two main ways to mod the game. This is through Python SDK mods or through OpenBLCM. Now, OpenBLCM initially looks really hard to use or really confusing, stuff like that, but it's really not that big of a problem, I can guarantee you. Basically, all you need to do is if a mod is a BLCM mod or a .txt, which both work with this, you can go ahead and open up your binaries folder for Borderlands 2 here. You can go right here, drop it in right here, open your game, type in exec, and then whatever the name of the mod is, .blcm or .txt, depending on what that is. And then if you do have OpenBLCM installed and it is configured in your game and stuff, it'll just run the mod outright. But if you are using a Python SDK mod, it should be as simple as dropping it into your mod folder here in Windows 32. And then whenever you get in game, there is a mod tab that you can go into and you can enable or disable mods from there. Of course, whenever you are downloading mods, you should also look to see if there are any other mods that you might need. Like for example, on this mod right here, it has a requirement of getting this supporting mod as well. So that is a very important thing to keep in mind. And also, if it is your first time modding the game, I would highly recommend trying BL2Fix. BL2Fix comes with an initial install that will teach you how to actually set up your game for modding, how to do the hex editing, how to do the sanity check stuff, stuff like that pretty much. It also comes with a large variety of quality of life things. So it allows a dialogue skip, cutscene skipper, you can reroll mission rewards with Iridium, you can revert back to level 72 OP8, unlimited bank space, a bunch of stuff like that. And then, of course, it is fully customizable, so you can go ahead and pick and choose pieces of it that you want to enable or disable. But one of the main problems with it is it doesn't necessarily play well with a lot of overhaul mods. So you can try to run them in tandem. It can cause problems sometimes. Maybe you could disable a bunch of stuff and be able to fix to make it to still work. But I probably wouldn't recommend trying that all the time. Sometimes you will just want to disable BL2Fix outright and just go with whatever your mod pack recommends you play instead. And then of course on the Python SDK mod base here, there are tons of quality of life mods. Some of the good ones are Sanity Saver, which makes it so that any modded weapons won't get deleted out of your character's hands or backpack. Alt use vendors, you can walk up to a vendor, press a button, and it'll insta-fill your ammo or health if it is an ammo or health vendor respectively. Auto pickup, whenever you open a chest, it instantly scoops up all of the collectibles, stuff like that. We've got backpack manager, increases your backpack size because the backpack in BL2 is normally pretty small already. Be gone out of bound loot, this allows you to press a key and have all of the loot in the map teleport in front of the player. This is really good for stuff like if you gate crush Master G and you watch half of his loot fall through the ground. If you're running high um, physics for some reason and you're in bunkers arena and you won't turn it to low because you like how it looks for some reason, you can use that to get the loot out of the ground that way. Better spawns and better travel gives you BL3 type traveling system where you spawn next to a respawn station and you can open fast travel from anywhere. Borderlands Commander allows you to pause the game, run it in half speed, double the speed, four times, so on and so forth, either way. It allows you to toggle HUD elements, you can go into third person, you can quit without saving, you can do a bunch of stuff like that, teleport around, stuff like that. Configurable view models. This can allow your guns to be more tucked away and look better like that. I personally really like configurable view models. I use it in every mod pack that I run or every mod that I play simply because I have gotten way too used to it. Everything looks so nice and clean and tucked away. I like a more Halo 2, Halo Reach style gun where it's like out of the way in the corner. So I have to use this every time I play. There is a dialogue skipper here if you're not using BL2 Fix and your mod pack doesn't have a dialogue skipper. There is Easy Read Only, which allows you to 
toggle whether or not your character is in read-only mode with a single button press, which is really nice. There is an XP adjuster, which allows you to increase the XP gains that you get for each like difficulty mode or just from enemies in general, because let's be honest, level 50 to level 80 is an absolute grind for no reason, so you can go ahead and do that. There is a map reloader, which allows you to just reload a map and teleport right back to where you were when you quit. You can also do this in a way that allows you to not save the game so that you don't have to use read-only mode. I would still recommend using read-only if you did that. There is a way to remove the giant advertisement for Borderlands 3 or Wonderlands here. This is, of course, a really nice thing because we paid for a full price game and have a free game advertisement on the front page for some reason. There is photo mode if you want to take pictures of your character or like stuff in the environment, stuff like that. There is the part notifier which will basically show you the parts on equipment so you don't have to sit there and learn this very small difference between like SMG or like assault rifle parts, stuff like that. We've got the respec hotkey here, which allows you to respec your character from anywhere, so you don't need to go to a station to do that. We've got reward reroller, which if you aren't using BL2Fix, you can run this instead to reroll quest rewards in front of whatever you want to do. This saves you a lot of time on read-only farming and stuff like that, because you can just sit there and just spam the button until you see a thing you like. We've got simple zoom. If you're a Minecraft kid who likes Optifine, I respect that. I played a lot of Minecraft, so like, I get that. There is a sliding mod, which allows you to slide around. It's a little bit strong, not gonna lie. It allows you to really just like crank around for absolutely no reason. If you have any movement speed buffs, you slide really, really fast, stuff like that. But I've just gotten really used to using it, so it's just what I run. There is spawn multiplier, which allows you to increase enemy spawns which is really useful if you're doing like tubby farming and you just need a lot of like enemies to just sort through like that we've got the speedometer mod here which isn't necessarily useful but it can show you how fast you're moving this can allow you to see if your movement speed buffs are being applied properly this can show you how fast the individual cars go how fast you're falling stuff like that pretty much and then we've got better damage feedback which is a very new mod but it allows you to change the color of critical hits. It allows you to add a nice noise to critical hits that you apply to enemies. Stuff like that. It's also really nice. And then moving away from the Python mods, which again are the drag and drop mods, we are moving on to BLCM. A lot of BLCM realistically is just overhauls. There's a couple quality of lifes here, as you can see. We've got a lot of stuff to comb through if you wanted to come in here and comb through that. Of course, they do have a big directory full of just like all of the individual changes, which I will link as well. And then that's pretty much it. Mainly I use BLCM for overhauls, and then I use Python SDK for my support mods because those are just really convenient in that way. You can merge mods in BLCM. It's not really that hard to do. I would recommend looking that up if you are interested. Once again, it's not hard. And then if you do have any problems setting up any mods, I would recommend just looking up a video. Shadow Evil is really good about this. He has a Discord where you can ask questions about it. I'll probably link that down in the description too. He also makes videos, and he is really good with mod stuff as he does mods himself. So, yeah. Hope this has been helpful. Hope you get some hints from this. I will leave a lot of these down in the description below me. Have a good day.